And welcome back once again to The Breakfast. It's time for uh, Off the Press. It's our uh, period when we have uh, conversations on stories making headlines across the country. And this morning, I look forward to a very interesting conversation. We're going to be speaking once again, uh, like uh, Elia said, with uh, Aisha Yusufu, the co-convener of the Bring Back Our Girls group. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, ma'am. Thank you so much for having me. We're kicking off this morning with stories on the This Day newspapers, and I feel one of them that has made headlines across the country in the last few hours has to be uh, the report on the president barring the release of Forex uh, for food and fertilizer importation. It says uh, Buhari bars release of Forex for food and fertilizer importation. It also says a UK court orders PNID to pay Nigeria £1.5 million uh, cost. Um, also on the this day newspapers, bank CEOs, why we resign from economic summit group board, uh, say our position was no longer tenable. Also, 5,100 card readers gone as fire got Undo INEC office. Um, a few others uh, on the this day newspapers this morning. Federal government projects one trillion naira petrol subsidy savings. Uh, target uh, targets economic and infrastructural development. Um, I think uh, th th these are the, the major ones I will take on the this day news it was this morning. Um, Aisha Yusufu, over to you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, so many uh, headlines there. One doesn't even know where to start with. But I'll start with the top one uh, at, at the top most there, where Buhari bars release of forest for food, fertilizer, imports. And uh, you just wonder what is happening in this government. Just a few days ago, you know, we saw the release from CBN where they're talking about maize uh, importation and certain uh, firms that have been giving uh, waivers to bring in maize into the country because there's shortage of maize uh, right now in the country. The same president uh, a few a few days ago, maybe about probably a week ago, had uh, commiserated with farmers over the flooding that has happened in Nigeria and talked about the fact that the the agri, uh, the agri sector is, it will, it will be hit with what has happened with the flooding and the lack of rains in some parts that have uh, destroyed farm, uh, 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 farm produce. So it's, it's, it's a bit uh, off to see the president, you know, coming out now to say that, oh, they shouldn't know forex should be released. I mean, why didn't all of that was discussed before uh, CB, CBN had done that? But it just goes to show the same thing that indeed there's no coordination within this government and everything is just is just going on. Uh, back to the UK uh, court orders P and ID to pay Nigeria 1.5 million uh, cost. I see a lot of people, you know, are euphoric about it, but we need to understand that this is to cover the legal cost. The case is still on. The case is still, uh, it's not up. This was uh, to cover the legal cost where uh, Nigeria asked for extension of time to challenge the arbitration award that was earlier given, and we have up to November 2020 to ensure that we get this case on. So it's not yet, uh, uh, we should not uh, allow our euphoria to take us uh, to forget the main issue that it's on ground. And this is the time for Nigeria to, 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 to ensure that it, it, uh, it works on its defense and uh, we, we eventually uh, we win that case because we have so much to lose. Let's not focus on the 1.5 million uh, pounds that we, we have there. Uh, coming to the issue of what 5,100 uh, card readers, uh, 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 you know, that gone as fire gods are on Do INEC. It's really sad what is happening. And part of the things that are happening is because of the fact that we have, we do not have electoral uh, uh, reforms on, on ground. The electoral uh, reform wasn't signed into, uh, electoral bill wasn't signed into law, and today we have politicians who are desperate, who can do anything for them to win the uh, election. One of the things we saw with the 2015 election was that people thought the card reader was part of the law, and so they behave themselves because they know if they do anything in, in any sort of way, uh, it's going to affect them. But right now, it's free for all. It, the election today, as it is, without electoral reform, is that the most violent can become uh, the, the ones that we get in, into office. And, and it's really sad that this uh, we have allowed this uh, to go on for such a, a, a long time. All right. Uh, on the issue of, uh, okay, before I just go on this, uh, uh, FG projects, uh, one trillion petrol subsidies. Yeah, let, let, let's wrap up with that one. Economic infrastructure development. Yeah. And I think uh, there's a whole lot uh, that can be done there. We hope this time, not that, not like, not, 
unlike what happened in 2016 when the federal government said they had stopped subsidy, but they, they called it another name on the recovery and continued, we hope for sure this time it will be that way. And then the issue about subsidy and the regulation is the fact that the government has to take its hands off price uh, fixing and price capping. We can no longer have a situation whereby you buy the same uh, cost for one liter of petrol in Lagos, and you buy it also in, in Sokoto, in Edo State, in, in, in Meduguri, and, and all of that. So it, it's very important that there be deregulation, and we see uh, what we can do to ensure that we're able to produce these products in our country. Okay, uh, thanks a lot. We're going to um, introduce and say good morning to Bulahon Lady Day for, and thank you very much for joining us also. And uh, we're going to. Uh, Thank you. We're going to bring you in with uh, our next paper, which is uh, the Nation newspapers this morning. Uh, lead story there is talking about the food scarcity that is likely um, after massive flooding. It's a uh, head on the, uh, the Nation newspapers this morning. It also, uh, rather, it says food scarcity likely with massive flooding. Also, President Buhari halts CBN Forex for food and fertilizer import. Why we quit NESG board by bank CEOs. And also a uh, Dubai-bound uh, passenger nabbed with 2,886 ATM cards. A uh, UK court asks PNID to pay Nigeria 1.5 million pounds fees. And uh, gunmen abduct kid and others in FCT suburb. One of the stories that we uh, spoke about earlier um, on the breakfast. Um, also, Abdul Salami panel wades into Edo violence. Um, Southwest PDP rift dippens. And uh, lastly, fire burns INEC card readers in Akure. There's a few others that we might also throw in. COVID-19 positive cases dropping despite rise in sample collections. Uh, that's um, also on the Nation newspapers this morning. Um, and of course, in Edo State, okay. APC and PDP tango over TV, uh, TV debate. Uh, Obaseki family backs governor's re-election bid as uh, Izeyamu promises viable civil service. Mr. Gulahan, please go ahead. Okay. Um, I, I think the issue of uh, food scarcity uh, has already been thoroughly trashed by uh, Madam Aisha. What we have in that news item is a, is a reflection of the lack of coordination. Uh, you see a situation in which governments came out and said, oh, we're going to stop maize importation. Then about a month after, it came out and said, okay, we will allow some people to import the maize. So the question you need to ask yourself is, as at the time you were saying no maize information, has it done its homework and assured itself that, oh, we have enough production base for me, that is why I'm saying no maize importation. If we don't have that, then what's the basis for saying no maize importation now? A month after, you said, okay, uh, uh, let these people import. And then a week after, you say, oh, don't give money for food importation. Modern economic planning requires a lot of integration. And for every policy pronouncement you make, you must ask fundamental questions to be sure that you're not just rolling out policies, but that all the pros and cons and all the areas where it will affect the people have been visited and addressed. Then you roll out. It shouldn't be a knee-jerk reaction for policy matters at all. And, and that's what we're seeing in that aggregate space. The flooding is, is a major issue. If you take rice, for example, um, as of 2019, we were told that we are still producing only 55% of what we consume. So, Kebi is one of the production bases for our, our rights. If Kebi is flooded, there are major issues. So, what that should tell us is that we need to begin to plan. Already, rice is expensive. If part of the 55% that we are producing is going to be affected by flooding, we have to start thinking ahead of what exactly we're going to do so that rice doesn't go to 40,000 or whatever yeah. over time. Um, there was also the news item about. Um, resignation of some board members of NESG. Yeah. It's a very curious situation. Um, NESG has gone ahead to criticize the, the new BOFIA, that's the Banking and Other Financial Institutions Act. And it says that, oh, this new BOFIA seems to give uh, an untamed power to the CBN to do certain things. And he doesn't believe that giving the CBN governor or the CBN that kind of a power is good for us as a people. Then 
Then, like about a week after, you saw that all the bank CEOs on that board resigned on the board of NESG. So NESG criticized CBN today. The next day, the bank CEOs on, on, on NESG resigned. It doesn't, um, it, it feels funny in a way. Is it that government sees something wrong about criticism? NESG may not be wrong, may not be right. Maybe they're not totally right. Um, CBM may also not be totally right. There has to be a meeting point that addresses those issues to the benefit of the public. And that, that middle point is what we need to seek. So the issue of somebody criticizing yesterday and then all of a sudden all the people that the CPM controls now resigns the next day doesn't speak well at all. I, I hope we can we can go back to what the real issues are about both here and address it as it were. All right, and um, we're going to move to the Punch newspapers uh, now. And, of course, uh, I share you, Sufa, I think you'll be picking up from here. Uh, the lead story on the Punch this morning still talking about uh, uh, inflation. Uh, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria warns of rising inflation, faults the federal government on food sufficiency. It also says uh, here on the Punch, Baker's hint of plans to jack up bread price. Okay, also on the punch, Nigerians and others face deportation. UAE issues November deadline. Also, British court orders PNID to pay Nigeria 1.5 million pounds once again. Federal government inaugurates 75 billion Naira SME's COVID-19 stimulus uh, schemes. Also on the punch this morning, one killed as Ondo APC deputy governor's uh, party's uh, supporters clash. Resident doctors suspend strike. The federal government to pay 8.9 billion naira allowances. It also says on the punch will renovate 952 schools before December, and that is from Ogun State. And also police arraign Lagos doctor who fled UK for false rape allegation. Four Fulani traders arraigned for stealing farmers uh, 1.5 million naira. And also Ghana wanted to work for God uh, to be a changed man before he was killed says a widow and that's uh, of course referring to the, um, the story from um, uh, Benway State I believe um, a few days ago. Um, all right th these are the major stories this morning on the Punch newspapers this morning. Aisha Yusufu over to you. Uh, uh, thank you thank you so much. Uh, let me just start with this uh, Ghana uh, the news on Ghana being killed uh, by, by soldiers uh, you know, extrajudiciously. And it's really sad that we keep on going on this path. And I'm just wondering, why is it that our security agent, agent, agencies are always ready to kill rather than to get people in custody and actually get information from them? We cannot win uh, the war against insurgency, insurgency or banditry without uh, without having uh, intelligence uh, gathering, without working on that a whole lot, without the intelligence. And the people that would provide, you know, first-hand intelligence, they are always being killed. And you begin to wonder, are they killed so that they would not implicate certain, peoples in, certain people in certain places? These are some of the questions that, that we really uh, need to, 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 to ask. And then uh, MAN, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, warns of rising inflation for FG on food sufficiency. Uh, it's a really major issue because uh, where there's no food security, we cannot have any kind of security. And today, like we see, the bakers are hitting of uh, increase to jack up bread price. And you really can't blame them because practically everything has gone up. Even the government has been taxing all the things that are taxable. They have been hiking prices, increasing prices. And of course, these bakers, they work within this environment. And it's always so difficult for them to be able to, 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 uh, to jack up uh, the, the price. So it's, it's one of the things where we're looking at. There's hunger in the country. There's more hunger that is being uh, pro projected. And yet the government isn't doing anything to mitigate this and ensure that the poor the, the, the poor people in Nigeria don't suffer. And, and you begin to wonder where the government is saying they've set up a committee to take 100 million people out of poverty. Are they going to die before you now take them out of poverty? Because hunger, I mean, it's the main problem that a lot of the poor people are facing uh, right now. Uh, on the issue of uh, of, of uh, killings, uh, uh, in uh, one kill that's on no APC deputy governor party supporters clash. It's really it's really sad that we continue to have this in, 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 during our election. The the 
all of this going on, it, it's, 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 it, I just don't get it. How are people ready to kill when you're supposed to serve? It just says that a lot of them, they are not there to serve. They are just there to enrich themselves because it, there's nothing worth a violence in terms of our people are wanting to, 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 to serve. And these are the things we need to talk about. But before I just stop here, I, one of the things I wanted to talk about, which was on the other newspaper, is the attack in Abuja, suburb Abuja yeah. com uh, uh, community. A suburb near Abuja that uh, there was attack and then over 30 people were abducted. I mean, we think we've, we're playing with kids' clothes. Once upon a time, people felt that Abuja, nothing could come there. And now they're attacking the sub suburbs of Abuja. Before you will know what's happening, they're going to get into the, the town of Abuja. And we, if we do nothing, all of us are sitting victims. And unfortunately, the victim part is going around. And in Nigeria, like I would always say, being a victim is no longer a matter of if, it's not a matter of when. All right, brilliant. Um, well, Ahon Lodjede, back to you now. We're going to be uh, taking stories from the Daily Sun um, and getting to speak on this. Um, earlier on the breakfast, um, of course, uh, just to follow up to what Aisha Yusufu just spoke on, we also had addressed uh, fears of uh, Abuja residents, and hopefully security agencies will be able to quickly uh, act um, if uh, need be. But let's go to the Daily Sun. Police arrest 18 protesters and four journalists in Lagos. It also speaks on terrorism. Anambra residents demand investigation into influx of suspected bandits. Uh, JAF, uh, civil society groups, mobilized for mass action. That's also uh, also on the story of uh, police arresting 18 protesters. Um, government will rebuild refineries, says Silva, the Minister of Petroleum. Um, also on the Daily Sun, uh, protests against fall price and electricity tariff uh, hike um, expand. INEC also to deploy 3,000 th thermometers in Edo and Ondo elections, says uh, uh, Mahmoud Yakubu. Mayhem in Ondo as political thugs allegedly kill ZLP stalwart. And a clinic's lays foundation stone for cancer center in Lagos. And of course, once again on the fire in the Ondo state uh, gubernatorial um, uh, elections, uh, the uh, card readers that were burnt yesterday. Uh, well, I'll, uh, let's uh, hear from you. Go ahead. Uh, I, I would like to take the issue of uh, the police and the protesters. Um, the, the approach to me is, is wrong. And the government might assume that uh, this would take the same direction as the revolution now arrest and frustration of, uh, of protesters. But it may not. As a matter of fact, this arrest may aggravate or trigger bigger protests. It, the, the, the right to protest peacefully is a guarantee, is an internationally recognized right. People should be able to protest peacefully on things that they don't like. And to be frank, they are, they are justified about, about the issue of a petroleum subsidy. I am for subsidy removal. I, I worked in an all, like, all I guess, uh, sector before, and I know that subsidy is real and that it is bad. Is a, is, a, is, a, is a cesspool of, of, of corruption to the core, and it needs to go. But if it needs to go, so how should it go? Number one, we have an information gap. So the people don't know what is going on. They don't know why you are doing what you are doing and how the, this is in their interest. So you have not even engaged with the stakeholders. You have not told them anything. You just force it down their neck and say, take this one and, 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 and swallow it. In the midst of several other things that they are already swallowing. Don't they deserve to know? The second part is the fact that the, the, the politicians themselves, what sacrifice are they putting on the table? So you're calling on the people and say, make this sacrifice, make this other one, make this other one. Make this other one. Meanwhile, we're talking about Cost of governance that is huge, jumbo salaries everywhere, wastages, all sort of importation that are benefiting the people who are in the upper part of that of that society ladder, and they are not seen to be putting anything on the table in terms of sacrifice. Even the presidential fleet are still there, as they are, and, 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 and I, I, I don't know what to say. So when when Nigerians see those kind of things, yeah. they will want to protest. And the issue of fail, you have not explained what is going on. You don't know where exactly what the issue is. So if people are asking questions that, look, when crude oil was uh, uh, 68, 
we were paying 148. Now that crude oil is 45, why are we paying 160? Is that not a valid question for anybody to ask? It is, but nobody has told them why. We need to learn to be more transparent in our issues and clamping down on peaceful protest is not the way to go at all. Government should go and do it some way. I don't know whether we still have Minister of Information in this country. I don't know, because what, what are they telling us? It seems as if the entire government is taking on the cloak of the personality of the president. He doesn't talk that much, and he probably doesn't care whether you understand what he's trying to do or not. An entire government cannot take on that kind of a cloak. We must engage with the, with the, with the, with the members of the public and not arrest protesters. That's, that's not the way to go. Okay, and um, I show you so far. I'm bringing you back now with uh, the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, the lead story here is, of course, we we're talking about the INEC office and the fire um, in uh, Ondo State uh, that happened yesterday. Um, there's also other stories on the Nigerian Tribune. Allow Akala, Folaring, Shitu, and uh, others uh, meet or your factions in Abuja. Customs intercept suspects with 2,886 ATM cards concealed in noodles carton. Also, bandits strike in Abuja, abduct residents. Um, once again, uh, UK court orders uh, PNID to de uh, deposit $1.5 million of pounds rather in Nigeria. President Buhari orders additional um, 8.9 billion Naira COVID allowance for health workers. FAAC disbursements to federal government and states decreased by over 5% in 2020 of uh, second quarter. Manufacturers spent over 67.3 billion naira on self-generated power supply in 2019. And also, WIAC conducts exams in uh, Chibok schools after six years. Um, a few others, uh, journalists and protesters arrested in Lagos over electricity strike and uh, petrol price hike. Um, I'm going to also just take one or two from the business day before we go. Nigeria's low yields uh, position equities as a credible alternative. Also, um, articulated uh, actions, not reports, will change Nigeria's fortune, says Atedo Peterside. Um, one or two others here are five issues Nigeria uh, must pay urgent attention to to um, avoid increasing poor population. And also hypertension and diabetes increase risk of dying in Africa, and that's with regards to uh, COVID-19. All right, so... Okay, okay should I go ahead? Um, I think you can quickly just touch on one because we're, we're out of time. Just on one, one of the stories. Okay, so okay, let me just talk on the issue of uh, Chibo girls uh, and the fact that their YAC is conducting exam there six years uh, after their abduction. The school isn't rebuilt yet, so I wonder on what, under what condition uh, they were conducting uh, that, that abduction. And to remind us all that 112 uh, Chibo girls are still uh, in captivity. If I have time, I would say if manufacturers are spending 67.3 billion on self-generated power supply, uh, in, in this, so they did that in 2019, no one that things are, that are produced in Nigeria are so expensive and they cannot compete with those that have been uh, imported. And when we import, what we do is that we export jobs and we import unemployment. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aisha Yusufu and uh, Gulao Olojide for speaking with us. Always very interesting having this conversation with you. Well, nice Thank you for having us. And that's a wrap for up for the press. Uh, for now, we'll take a short break and we'll be back on The Breakfast. <laughs>